I want you to think about this one. Where is God in your life? You know, when the Bible trial came, Mr. Wesley, I'd be out there in the queue right now, right in front of each and every one of you asking that, asking you that question. I would be calling you to account for your faith. I would be calling to myself to account for my faith. But thankfully, I'm not Mr. Wesley this morning. So I won't give you that test. But sometimes you stand up in front of the mirror and give yourself that test. That's not where he's at in your life. Because you're still in the room with us. You know, I'm in class all the time, it seems like. And I was in class recently, and the name of the class was called Practical Christian Living. You know, something we should all have down pat, shouldn't we? It's something that we do every day of our lives, day in and day out. But is it? Do we consider God in everything we do? Do we consider God when we wake up in the morning? Do we consider God when we go to work every day? Do we consider God when we make plans for the weekend? Or do we just consider God when we come here on Sunday mornings? We should and we need to consider God in everything we do. You know, we were asked a question in class. We were asked that very question I just asked you. Where is God in your life? And when I, I think I want to answer it this morning by, by talking about bubbles. You know, we all live our lives in bubbles. Did you know that? When we are born, our bubble is pretty small. What's in that bubble when we're born? Well, usually it's our mother and our dad. It's usually our brother and our sister if we have one. It's usually, am I going to get fed? And who's going to change my diaper? That's what's in our black bubble when we're born. But as we, as we grow up and as we become adults and as we go along our through our lives, our bubbles get bigger. And our bubbles, we start to include in our bubbles friends that we make, lessons that we've learned, work, bills, everything. It all starts piling up into that bubble. And that bubble just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And where's God in that bubble? Where is God in that bubble? Is he even in the bubble? Or has he just been pushed out? You know, if you blow a bubble, like from the store, from these little bubbles, they're pretty insignificant and they burst in just a heartbeat, don't they? Because there's nothing to them. And that's how our, the bubbles in our lives act. If we don't have God in that bubble, that bubble was pretty insignificant and it's going to burst. You know, I brought a visual aid with me here this morning, and some of you are out there smiling and you're already helping us to pull out of here. But not all of you do. We're talking about bubbles this morning. Well, this just so happens to have some bubbles in it. And it so happens to go with our lesson today. You know, any good builder, anyone that knows anything at all, when they're trying to build something, as we should when we're trying to build our lives, know that if these bubbles are on center, that our lives or the building or whatever we're doing will be right. And you know, this is a pretty good example because when you lay this level on God's altar, there's three different bubbles in that level, and right now there's actually four, and right now they're all perfect dead center. And that's where they need to be. If God is in the center of our lives, this is those bubbles are in the center of that level. If he's going to be there, we have to seek God first. When we get up in the morning, we have to seek him. When we go to work, we have to seek him. When we plan for the weekend, we have to seek him. And when we are Christians, let me let, let, me let you in on a little secret. We need to seek Him all the more. Yep. Just because we are Christians or profess to be Christians does not mean that we do not need to seek God. So we need 
need to talk today about what we need to do to seek God, what we need to do to find Him. And that passage in Isaiah lays it right out for us. This is the Bible word. It says, Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake His way. God tells us right there. It tells us where the Lord may be found. It tells us where to look for Him. It tells us to call upon Him while He is near. There is always a time to seek God. You know, I like the verse of 2 Corinthians 6 2. It says, At the acceptable time I listened to you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. And behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now is the day to call upon the Lord. You know, some of you out there might be thinking, and a lot of people might be thinking, oh, he's, he's talking about God's coming back today. That's not what I'm saying, although we do not know the time of God's coming. That's why today's lesson is so important, and last week's lesson was so important. We have to focus on God, we have to seek God, and we have to do it today. The day of our salvation is at hand, that's what this verse says. We have a duty to seek after God. Zephaniah 2 3 says, Seek the Lord, all the humble of the earth, who have carried out his ordinances. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's hand. Time after time after time in this holy book, in God's holy word, we are told where we need to seek God. We are told how to seek God. The time for seeking God is not fixed by when we feel like doing it. When we make time in our lives, oh, well, I've got a lot to do today. I've got that heavy to do list to do today. Oh, I worked a little hard yesterday, so I think I'm just going to sit around and do the bottom of nothing today. It's not up to us. Well, it is up to us. I'm sorry. It is a good We must not use our own excuses. What about that old saying? Why, why do today what you can put off till tomorrow? How many times have we heard that? And how many times have we done it? An awful lot. You know, I've got a lot of things around the house that need to be done, that Penny will tell you that need to be done for quite a while. And we do that with God, don't we? Instead of taking the time to find God into our life, to look for Him, we put it off. Because seeking God, following His Word, doing what He asked us, is not an easy thing to do. There are times in our lives when we do call, because we just don't have an answer. There are times when we just feel so low that we cannot see a way out. And that is the time, most of all, that we need to seek God. The time for seeking God is fixed by God. Do you know that? It is fixed by God. He has, a, he has this free gift, this free gift of grace that allows us, no matter where we're at, to seek Him. Again, we get caught up in that thing called sin. We get caught up, caught up in that thing that it stops us from seeking God for a couple reasons. Stops us from seeking God because we think we're not good enough to seek God. And, and so we put off seeking Him because we just think, well, maybe I'll be better next week and we'll, we'll try and seek Him then when I've done something good in my life. No, it's with Him. It's when we've done something bad. It's, it's when we are so far down that we are fine that we need to seek God the most. It's as Christians, when we think we've got it all down pat, that we need to seek God the most because we don't really do have it all down pat. <coughs> How many times have you used this excuse? Back in the day, I used this a lot. Thought about, well, I don't really feel like going to church today because I've had a hard week. So I'm just going to stay home today. And then what happens next Sunday? Oh, you know, if I go back to church today, the first thing they're going to do is the preacher's going to ask me where I was last Sunday. So I better not go back this Sunday either. And that just continues to snowball. It continues to build up and build up and build up until all of a sudden we're no longer good enough to seek God. In our 
own minds, in our own minds. That gift of grace is just amazing because God says, you know, you can sin and you can still come to me. You don't have to come to me when you get good. Come to me and I will make you good. That's what God tells us. And that's so important. Now God doesn't say, my grace gives you a license to keep on sinning. He used God's grace as an excuse to sin. That's what some of us do. Oh, I can, I can go ahead and get away with it because God's going to let go. And there's a difference between God excusing us of our sin and we ourselves giving us an excuse to keep on sinning. Do you hear the difference, sir? There's a huge difference. And the best way we can do to seek God is that we need to cleanse our thoughts. Like I talked about focusing last week. We need to cleanse our thoughts of anyone but Him. We need to cleanse our hearts of anyone but Him. We need to, I told you last week, we need to come get to the point where we cannot breathe, even take a breath, without God. That's where we need to be. That's how important He needs to be in our lives. That we cannot even take a breath without God. Very ill. And, and, and there might not be any hope in the doctor says, I don't know. How many times have you said, God, if you'll just give me your life, I will come to you. Hmm. How many times have you said that? over the course of your life. I know I've prayed that sometimes, especially with my grandson. But if we have God in our heart all the time, you don't need to do that, do we? Look at all the people that are hurting. You know, what about the person who has cancer? What about the person who may be lost today? I'm sure that if you ask them, they'd prefer not to be without that cancer. I'm sure if you ask them, they'd prefer to have their leg back. Mm -hmm. But we know things like that are going to happen. We know that we cannot avoid that. So that tells us even more that we need to seek God. We need to find out where He's at in our lives. So what do you think? Where is God in your life? Is God where he needs to be? Is he in the center of your bubble today? Those are the questions that you must ask yourself, that you must examine yourself in that question. Are we to go on living our lives as we've done in the past? Or are we going to live our lives as we need to live? with God in the center of our body? Are we going to consider God in all that we do today? Or are we just going to think about Him when it's going to be needed for us? These are hard questions. These are questions our faith demands an answer to. That our God wants an answer to. God's right there waiting. He's just waiting for you to come there. Don't make an excuse. Be ready, willing, and able the next time someone asks you, looks in your eyes and says, where is God in your life? I want you to be prepared to tell them.